So tonight, we're going to start working on something that I think you guys, well, first of all, you're also definitely going to need a calculator. Um, who doesn't have a calculator? Here you go. There you go, there you go, there you go. Uh, let's see. Here you go, one, two, three, and four. And everybody else has a calculator? Good. Uh, uh, oh, no, 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 here, I got one. By the way, so I found this calculator in, this, in, in here a couple days ago, or a couple weeks ago, and the batteries were dead. This one, notice this one's not a, a solar one. Most of the other ones are solar ones. And the batteries were dead. And those tiny little batteries that are the, like watch batteries or whatever, and I couldn't find them like on base or anything. So I had to improvise. <laughs> I had to, right? So I, I, I took it apart and wired it up. This is what happens when you get an electrical engineer who likes to tinker with things. Anyway, I tinkered it up, I put it together uh, and uh, got the battery. So now this thing's got like two C batteries. It should last, I figure it should last till about 2,120, <laughs> right, with this battery. So here you go. Careful, it's heavy. <laughs> here you go. All right. No, <laughs> it is not going to shock you, I promise you. OK, um, what I handed out, oops, I need one too. I don't know if there's an extra hanging around. Oh, there it is. So I will be giving you this, thank you. I will be giving you this uh, formula sheet for the rest of the class. And the reason is because there's some formulas on here that are you don't want to memorize. I made you memorize the quadratic formula because it's not on here. This is the one that everybody else taking Math 103 gets. Um, but like, if you look down at the one right above probability and counting rules, you don't want to have to memorize that if you can help it, right? I mean, you could, but what's the point, right? We will be able to use all of these by the, all of these top half by the end of tonight. Now, the trick is not necessarily hard math. Like, there is no hard math about what we're going to do tonight. The hard part is getting your calculator to properly type all this stuff in right, right? And so I want you to practice that a lot tonight. So we're going to practice as much as we can on typing these things in and obviously understanding what each little term means. But really, it's not particularly hard. It's just, uh, I got to figure out how to make my calculator do what I want. OK. So we are going to start. This is section 8.2. 8.2, and it's called Simple Interest. So we've gotten into some of the business type stuff. OK, some of the business type stuff. Um, and this one is, well, this one isn't even business stuff. This is like what happens if you want to get a loan, right? Um, anybody ever been in Norfolk, stationed in Norfolk? No, nobody yet? A couple people. 90. All you guys, Navy guys haven't been in Norfolk? San Diego? Yorktown. Yorktown? OK, well, oh yeah, Yorktown. Um, if, you're stand, if you're stationed in Norfolk, there are places that are off limits. Just like there are here, I guess. But there are places that are off limits. And like 90% of the places that are off limits are loan places, like payday loans, <laughs> right? It, it's because, yeah, like, like finance ones and whatever. Because, because they end up giving you these rates. And they're like, oh, you can, here, you can bring us your check. We'll give you a loan. And you just pay it back within 30 days, and you're fine. And it's like, like the interest rate is like 320% per year, right? <laughs> and these, these poor, like, like, you know, E1s go in there, like, I want to get a car. And they get this loan, and it's like 300%. And they'll never pay it off, and they end up getting bad credit, and it's kind of a pain. So that's why they, they make things. So you got to understand a little bit about interest in loans, interest in mortgages, interest in um, investments, that sort of thing. I mean, there's good things about it, interest, too. You can, like, use it to your advantage. OK? But we got to get some vocabulary down before we do anything. OK? So here's the vocab for interest rates, or simple interest. Okay? First of all, you've got the principal, P-R-I-N-C-I-P-A-L. P-R-I-N-C-I-P-A-L. The principal is the amount that you borrowed, amount borrowed or invested. In other words, if you invested $1,000, that's the principal. If you borrow, make a car, get a car loan, and you borrow ten thousand dollars to pay for your car, that's the principal. Okay. All right. Then you've got the rate. Okay. And the rate is the percent per year. And this is the important one. 
Okay, you will get lots of problems where they will give you a rate and then ask you something about like quarterly or monthly or something like that, but the rate itself is per year. Okay, and you will always see a rate per year. And if you have something that's like monthly payments, you're gonna end up dividing by 12, let's say, for certain certain things. Okay? And this is what gets charged on the principal. Charged on the principal. In other words, this is the rate that they multiply by the principal in some form or another to get you to tell how much they're going to make from you or how much you make if you're putting something in the bank. Okay? All right. And then finally, we have the time, okay, which is also in years. Okay? If you see time, and this is going to be our variable t, that's going to be in years. Okay? We will use lots of different times that aren't years, but, but we'll, in our formulas, we're gonna, when we say time, it'll be years. And then we'll have to kind of convert whatever that other thing is into years. Okay? It's not, not that hard. OK, here's your simple interest. The reason it's simple is because it's a pretty easy formula. Simple interest formula. Oops. Simple interest. Okay. Your simple interest formula is just the principal times the rate times the amount of time. It's a really easy formula. In other words, the amount of interest you pay, i, equals the principal times the rate times the time. Okay. What did we say rate was? Year. Amount per year in a percent. What did we say the time was? Year. Number of years. Okay. So here's an example. Okay, I'll put this right here. An example. Bob deposits $1,700. Some guy named Bob deposits deposits $1,700 okay, in an account, in an account, like a bank account or a certificate of deposit, a CD or something like that, earning earning 2% simple interest. He gets 2% simple interest for this. How much interest will he get in three years? How much interest will he get in three years? Okay. Now, I gave you an example that's pretty much perfect for this formula down here, right? The amount of interest is going to be the principal. How much? 1,700 times the rate. Now, the rate is in percent. But when we're multiplying it together, we're going to use the decimal amount. So we have to do what? Divide by 100. Careful, it's not time. Divide by 100. So in this case, 2 divided by 100 is 0 0.02, or 0 0.02, okay? times the number of years, which is three years. And when you do that out, you get $102. Sometimes you will get a number that says like 102, 102.6523. Well, just at the very least, go to the, just the cents, because you're not going to worry about that. You can either round or round up if you want or whatever. The homework questions for this week will ask you. A lot of them say just do it to the dollar and round. Some say do it to the cents and round. Okay? So he makes $102. So at the end, how much money does he have after three years? Yeah, he has $1,700 that he started with plus the $102 that he's making now. So he has $1,802 after one year, or three years. Not too bad. Okay? Any questions on that? That stuff's uh, relatively straightforward. Okay? All right, here's one for you to try. Find the number, find the amount of interest on a $2,000 loan at 5% after one year. I'll write that down. $2,000 loan. $2,000 loan at 5% interest for one year. Pretty easy one, I think. 
okay? 2,000 interest equals 2,000 times 0 0.05 or 0 0.05 times 1, which is, what is it? $100, easy, okay? Now, we also have this thing, this should, this should have been vocabulary, I guess, this thing called the future value. Okay? The future value means the total amount that, you're gonna, that you would have to pay with the principal on the initial amount, okay? which is exactly what you'd get at the end of your loan, or you'd have to pay, or sorry, you'd get at the end of your investment, or you'd pay at the end of your loan if you didn't make any payments in the middle. Okay? Most loans you pay off at a, at a given time, like over time, a number of different payments. But if you just had one payment, that's the future value. In other words, what would this money be worth in the future given this rate? Well, in this case, it's going to be $2,100 because it's the original $2,000 plus the $100. That's the future value. Okay? We can calculate that future value directly if we just do, okay, the, this is what, I don't know why they use A. I forget, do they, they might say on the thing. Uh, annual yield, annual, no, I'm not sure, the annum or something. I, I don't know what A stands for, but that's the future value. A okay, equals the principal plus the interest. Okay, and watch, watch this, me derive this. This is pretty easy. Principal plus the interest. We know that interest equals PRT. So we can go principal plus the principal times the rate times time. Can I factor a P out of this? In other words, do the inverse of the distribu distributed rule. A equals P. P goes into P one time plus P goes into PRT one time, RT times RT. This also is on your formula sheet. It is, I forgot to give you a formula sheet. Omar, how are you doing? Good, Ace. Um, this one is called the future value for simple interest. It's the principal times in parentheses 1 plus the rate times time. Okay? Let's just apply this for this one. Future value for this. $2,000 A equals $2,000 times 1 plus 0 0.05 times 1. You have to do, you know your order of operations. There's a reason we spent like so much time doing order of operations, because you've got to do this correctly. First you do the 0 0.05 times 1, which is easy. Then you add it to the 1. So you get 2,000 times 1.05. Okay? And then when you do 2,000 times 1.05, you should get the same amount, 2,100. Do you get that? Can you do that? Okay. All right. So it's pretty easy. So those two formulas, right on your formula sheet, you should never mess the formula part up. If you mess the calculator part up, that's what you got to practice. Okay. All right. Future value problem. Let's try one, an explicit one. Future value of a loan of seven thousand dollars. A loan of seven thousand dollars at four point five percent interest. 4.5% interest for nine months. Nine months now. Find the future value. Future value equals the principal times 1 plus the rate times time. What did we say time is in? Years now. How do you go from months to years? There you go. 9 divided by 12. So nine months, right? Times one, times one year divided by 12 months equals 9 twelfths years. That's what you have to plug in for t. Okay? That's the, this is where these ones start to get a little tricky because you go, oh, I forgot to do, oh, I forgot to do the months to years or whatever. For some reason, the, and it might be just because they want to make it easier, but for some reason the homework says, sometimes says, Assume 360 days in a year. I don't know why they would do that. You'd think they'd at least say 365. They could say 365.25, which is even closer, because you've got leap years in there, right? But you know. anyway, they say 360, so do it that. So in this case, 
7,000 is the principal times 1 plus the rate 0. Point, what is it this time? 1, 2, 0. 0.045 yep. times the time, which is now 9 twelfths. Okay. Again, practice your order of operations. First, you do 0. 0.045 times 9 divided by 12, right? which is 0. 0.75 because 3 fourths of a year. But you can do it this way. You can do in your calculators. Actually, just type this in your calculators. If you know how to do it, fine. But bear with me for those of you who might get this mixed up. First thing you do, well, you can do this all at once if you want to do it all at once. You do 7,000. Then you hit the left parentheses. Then you type, or sorry, 7,000. Then you hit the times button. Yeah, that's, I messed that up. 7,000, then the times button, then the left parentheses. Then you can type 1 plus. 0. 0.045 times 9 divided by 12, end parentheses, equals. What do you get? 7,236.25. That's the future value of that loan. And practice it. Make sure you get that. If you don't know how to do this on your calculator, you got to learn. I don't know how many times I can say that. Okay. Any questions on those, that one? Did everybody figure out how to put them in their calculators? If you didn't, take the time to figure it out now. OK, while, I'm, while you're still copying that down, if you want to do this. Example. Here's another one where you have to do a slightly different math. You borrow $2,000 from a friend who might turn out to be an enemy. Okay? You borrow $2,000. Okay? And your friend says, OK, three months from now, give me in three months, you need to pay your friend slash enemy. $2,225. <laughs> well, we'll find out. Okay? In three months, 2225 The question is, what interest rate is, interest rate is your friend charging you. Okay, how might we do that? Oh, shouldn't have erased that because that's the formula we're going to need to use. What do we know out of these? What do we know here? We know the future value because that's what you have to pay. Okay, so this is going to be the future value. Two, well, before I do that, I'm going to do the algebra. But this is the future value, 2, 2, 2, 5. Do you have the principal? Sure, that's the amount that you're borrowing. Do you have the rate? No. Nope, that's what we're looking for. Do you have the time? How much time is it? Which is how many years? 3 over 12 years. So you have to solve for r. That's not on your formula. The one that's on your formula is this. You have to now solve for the rate. OK, we can do this. How do I get rid of the P? You, you know what? You don't want to, you don't, you, that's a good question. Um, Travis says you could distribute the P through here. You could, but you're going to have to do a nasty thing later to undistribute it later because you, you, you don't want it to be part of the R. It's already not part of it. So can't subtract it because it's being multiplied by this whole thing. Division, yeah. Divide both sides by P. Okay? That means this is going to cancel out. You're going to get A over P equals 1 plus the rate times time. How do we get rid of the 1? Now we can subtract. Minus 1, minus 1. You get A divided by P minus 1 equals R times T. Now what do we do? 
we want it to get rid of the time. Divide both sides by time. Now, this is going to look a little funny. But what you end up with, that time goes away. You end up with the rate equals the future value divided by p, the principal, minus 1, all of that divided by the time. Okay. So there's the, and then, and then you've got to be able to get this. Now, if you wanted to plug in and do it with regular numbers, that's fine with me. I like to do the algebra first just because then I know what I'm getting myself into. Oh, oh, sorry. Minus 1, minus 1. A over P minus 1 equals RT. Divide both sides by T. Divide both sides by T. There you go. All right. Is your friend a friend? No. The rate equals a, which is the future value, 2225 divided by 2,000 minus 1, that whole thing, divided by 3 divided by 12. <coughs> it's another one where this one I would suggest doing this in pieces, not all at once on your calculator. I would just do it in pieces. You don't want to round until the last, last step, some of these. It becomes very important later. When we, when we see some, some future ones. But for now, don't, just do the best you can not to round. R equals 2225 minus 2,000. Sorry, divided by 2,000. Thank you. What's that equal to? I gave away my last calculator. 1.1125 minus 1 divided by, what's 3 divided by 12? 0.25. So now you're left with this. That's not too bad. That I can do in my head. 1.1125 minus 1 is 0.1125 divided by 0.25 gives you 0 0.45, which is how much percent? Multiply by 100, you get 45% interest. Your friend is not a friend, he is a shark. <laughs> OK? 45% interest. Yeah. This is why you need to know that because you might not think about it. You might like, oh, only 225 bucks, sure, you know. But 225 bucks is a lot of money, especially for three months, for a small loan like that. So if you're used to making like car payments or something, it might not seem that much. But it's 45 percent on your 2,000 dollars. Okay. Yeah. We can go backwards. I'm going to leave this up here for a sec. We can go backwards and figure out what the present value is in order to get to something that you want to attain. This is more important for things like investing. Okay, it's super important if you're in a crazy world like today you don't, and you don't have the post 9-11 GI Bill and you got to pay for your kids to go to college or something. This is like super important, right? The answer is tell your kids to either join the Navy, Army, Air Force <laughs> or uh, get in ROTC program or something, right? But because um, school is so expensive. But here's how you could do something like this. Uh, can I erase the stuff from the right? Can I erase any? Still writing this down at all? OK, I'll erase it all. All right. So let's say that, all right. You guys, anybody use here the, uh, what is it, SDP savings deposit, deposit program? If you're here, you can deposit money, and then when you leave, you get the rate. And it's like it's a really good rate, 10%. And they just give it to you, right? It's a simple interest loan is really what it is. <clears throat> okay? Let's say you're deployed for nine months. Some of you slackers are only deployed for nine months. Some of you real slackers are deployed for six months, like you Air Force people. Start off halfway done. Um, you deploy for nine months. At the end of that nine months, you want to have $5,000 to your name, OK? Because you want to buy a hot tub or something, right? How much money do you need to put in? How much, much do you need to put in at the beginning, at the beginning, at 10% interest? 
So you have $5,000 at the end. We can calculate this. Okay. We can calculate this. Give it a shot. And I give, I'll give you the hint. You're going to need to know A equals P times 1 plus rate times the time. Which one do you not have in this case? You don't have the principal. That's the part you're trying to figure out. Luckily, it's really easy to solve for P now. What do you have to divide by? Divide by the whole thing. 1 plus RT, 1 plus RT. Okay. Hey, man. How are you doing? Good. So you're left with the principal equals the final value, which is 5,000 in this case, divided by 1 plus the rate times the time. And because you're a slacker, you're only here for nine months. So you've got to remember to change it into years. How about the final value? $5,000 divided by 1 plus the rate, which is 0.1, biggest rate we've had so far, times the time, in this case, nine months. Again, 9 divided by 12. Okay? Make sure you know how to do that on your calculator. Do you have a calculator? No. Yeah. One short. I think we have any extras in here. You do need a calculator for this stuff. Right. Are you sure you want to? OK, I can give you a computer if you want to do that. Well, the calculator is not so great on it. But. OK. All right. Again, if you're having trouble typing all this into your calculator once, do it in steps. Just don't round until the end. Hmm? <coughs> 1 plus 9 twelfths is 0.75. So this is going to be 5,000 A equals Sorry, P equals 5,000 divided by 1 plus 0.1 times 0.75 is 0 0.075. So it's 1.075, which equals what? 4,651 dollars. That's a lot of money to put in right when you get here, right? But if you did, nine months later, you'd have $5,000. And you'd get, how much interest would you have? 5,000 minus 4651. 10 minus 1 is 99493. $349. That's not bad for, have, for just sticking a bunch of money and some money in an account for nine months. 350 bucks off just like that. Not too bad. Okay. Questions on that one? We'll do some more examples. We'll do some more examples on this stuff. OK? All right. Anybody ever heard of a thing called a discount loan? You hear about a discount loan? There's this weird thing. They, they, they make me teach this to you. It's interesting. Anybody, uh, if you bought a house before, you might have, they might have said, um, you can, do, you can uh, pay a number of points for your house. That's a discount off the loan. And what it does is it means that you, you actually pay a little more money up front, but your rate is lower. Sometimes it's a good idea, depending on how long you're going to own the house for. We're not going to get into those calculations quite yet. But this, what a discount loan is, is if you get, let's say you get $10,000, you, you borrow $10,000. Okay? Let's say you borrow $10,000. Well, instead of paying off the $10,000, over the time using a compounded interest sort of thing or whatever, what the, what the lender does is the lender says, I'm only going to give you 
and you don't have to pay any interest on that $9,600 because I already took the interest out of it. So in other words, they take the interest up front. That's called the discount. Okay? So that $400 that the that $400 is the amount that you get the interest part in this case. Okay, this is called the discount. And then that's how much you make the monthly payments on. And there's no other calculating it, so it's pretty easy. The only issue with it is you're actually in a certain sense paying more percentage for this money than you would for the $10,000 if you had to pay it at that original rate. I'll, sh I'll show you what that means in a second. Okay? So the discount is just the principal or the interest, you pay it up front, you're done. Okay? Let's look at another an example of this. We won't use the $10,000 example. You did a slightly different example. So let's say you borrow $8,000. $8,000 at you borrow you borrow $8,000 at 7% interest, okay? discounted, discounted for one year. I'll make it easy. One year. $8,000, 7% discounted for one year. Okay? We want to first find out what is the discount. What is the discount? In other words, you're paying interest up front. So we have a calcul we know how to calculate interest. Interest equals the principal times the rate times the time. Well, let's figure out what that, is, what that is. Principal times rate times time. The principal in this case is 8,000 times the rate, which is 0 0 0.07 times 1 for one year. Okay. And that comes out to be $560. So the lender says, I'm going to give you $8,000, but really I'm just going to give you $8,000. Well, the question B is, what, what do you actually, the net amount, in other words, the amount you get, is just going to be $8,000 minus $560, which in this case is $7,440. So the lender says, I'm going to give you a loan for $8,000. I'm going to take the interest now. So really, I'm only going to hand you $7,440. Okay. Let's figure out what the actual interest rate is on the money he hands you. Because you're going to pay it off $7,440. But let's figure out how much interest rate you're really paying on the money he hands to you. OK? It's actually pretty easy. Interest equals, sorry, the, yeah, the interest equals the principal times the rate times the time. And in this case, we know the interest, the original interest, right? Well, the total interest you're actually paying, 560 equals, we know the principal, 8,000. We, we don't know the rate, so I'm going to leave that as an R. We do know the time, which is one year. How do I get rid of the 8,000? Divide by 8,000. So I divide both sides by 8,000. The one's going to go away as well. Okay? And I'm left with 560 divided by 8,000 equals R. So the rate in this case is about 0.0753, it goes on for more decimal places, which is 1, 2, 7.53%. So what it means is when you take a discounted loan, unless they give you a lower rate, you're actually paying more for that money than you would otherwise because they only give you a certain amount. Somehow it's a little bit of semantics. I mean, it depends on how you really think about it. But to the, for the money that they hand you, you're paying a higher percentage because you can only get the use of that amount of money. You only get the use of $7,440. You don't get the use of all $8,000. So the interest you're paying is actually a higher rate for the money you actually get. So it doesn't, no big deal, but that's, uh, you know, that's how we figure that sort of thing out. Okay? There will be some questions on your homework about the simple 
interest rate with discounted loans as well. Okay. Any questions on this stuff so far? Yes. Question. See, yeah. Oh, sorry. I did do it wrong, didn't I? You're right. It's not going to be 8,000, is it? Because it's the principal that you're actually getting. Thank you very much. You guys did it. Yeah, keeping me honest. Keeping me honest. Uh, 5,000 equals 7,440 times the rate. And then you divide both sides by 7440, 7440. If I was better at convincing you, I'd convince you that I did that wrong so that you'd ask that question. If you do 560 divided by 7440, do you get this? Yes. Yeah, OK. Thanks. This is not rocket science, but it's tricky to get the, uh, the algebra part down because you've got a lot of algebra to do. I won't. You'll see some of these manipulations in the homeworks that you're going to have to do. It's a little tricky. Okay. Any other questions besides pointing out my mistakes? Good job. All right, let's take a break. Be back and be back at quarter after. Um, let's get going again. So I was just talking to some of you guys about this. Some of you guys made very good points. Chad made some very good points about problem number. Problem number, the bear one, problem number five. Here's what I'll do. I'm going to just, because that wasn't a very well worded problem and it was tricky and you've never seen that sort of thing before, even though I gave you a good hint, <laughs> I'm going to give everybody five points. Okay? So for those of you who did do to get it correct, you're going to get bonus points on that one. Nobody will get any more than one point off for the bear problem. Okay? All right. All right. So just add five, you add five to your score and you'll be happy. Okay? All right. And, and, and it's only because nobody actually came up and said, you've got to give us points back. That wasn't fair. You were getting there, but you didn't get that. You, you gave me some good things. All right. All right. OK, so look, look the, the last thing we did was um, simple interest. But if you guys haven't figured this out, the, big, the name of the game is actually compound interest. OK? Compound interest can make it so that you'll retire. Now, if you're in the military and you stay 20 years, you can actually retire and get the Navy to, or the whatever, the, honor, the military to pay you for the rest of your life. But let's say you want a little nest egg of your own. Okay, compound interest is the way to get there. Let's take an example. Okay, by the way, this is section 8.3. It's called compound, compound interest. Okay, and it's super duper important. If you invest $100, let's say you put $100 in some bank and you get 10% interest. Well, you're not going to get that in a bank, but let's say you invest it somehow and you get 10% interest for 10 years. All right. After the first year, the bank owes you, after the first year, the bank owes you $110. Because you're getting 10% interest on your $100 per year. And remember, the rate is per year. So after a year, you should have $110 in the bank. OK? Why don't they pay you interest on the extra $10? They should. OK? They should, because you haven't taken it out of the bank yet. Right? It's still in the bank. And now they, have a, they owe you $110, but they've still got your $110. They should pay. They should pay you interest on $110, not $100. Okay. This is called compound interest. This is compound interest. It's paying interest on the interest. In other words, paying interest on the interest. Okay. 
So let's see what happens here. Okay? Here's our year. Okay? And here's the balance, starting balance. Okay? And here next to it is the ending balance. Sorry, this is going to look funny. The ending <coughs> balance. Ending balance. Okay? And I'll do it like this. Uh oh. <laughs> there. Okay? All right. After year one, okay? Or, well, in year one, you start with $1,000. Is that what we said? Let's use 1000 Let's say it was 1000 OK? You start with $1,000. After year one, ah, this is going to be hard. I'm going to have to move this. Sorry, is anybody still copying this? You still copying this? You're going to do, it's going to be, your interest is going to be, remember, your final value formula, which is A equals uh, A equals P times 1 plus rate times the time. OK? Let's put that in here. I'm going to do this. Take this out of here so that I can put it in there. All right. So your ending balance is going to be 1,000 times 1 plus 10% interest still, 10 plus 0 0.10, which equals $1,100. Okay, That's in year one. You end with $1,100. In year two, you start with $1,100. Okay, and now it's going to be 1,100 times 1 plus 0 0.10. And if you do the math on this one, hopefully it works out, it's going to be 1210, okay? Which actually, if you look at it, actually equals the same thing as doing the same thing as doing 1,000 times 1 plus 0 0.10 squared. Okay? You can plug in you can plug in this to here and you'll get that formula when you do it out. Okay? In year 3, now you start with $1,210 and you do the same thing. 1,210 times 1 plus 0 0.10 and you end up with one three three one dollars, which is the same as saying one thousand your original times one plus zero point one zero cubed. Hmm, kind of cool. In year four, you now start with one three three one, and you go one three three one times one plus zero point one zero, which equals in this case fourteen sixty four point one zero which is the same as, can anybody figure the pattern out here? To the fourth, right? Okay. And so that's what happened if you did it by year. Okay, if every year you were to do this. Now, why doesn't the bank pay you every month on the interest you make during that month? Why not? Right? We could do the same thing and we could say, look, for the month, let's do it this way. Uh, are you still writing this one down? People are still writing this down. Instead of the year, look, the first month, you would still get some money in the first month from interest. Right? If they're really giving you money over time, they're keeping your money and they're, they're getting it over time. So I'll write it. Still writing? Getting there. Here, I'll start it up here. Uh, now it's not going to be year anymore. It's going to be month. I'll leave that one for people still doing it. Okay. Now it's going to be month. Okay. After one month, okay, you start with a thousand dollars. You end with start with one thousand. You end with one thousand times one plus point zero one. 0 divided by, sorry, 0 0.10, 0 0.10 divided by 12, because you're only getting 1 12th of the year during that month, okay, which is about $1,008.33. In the second month, you start with 
and you end up with 1,008.33 times 1 plus 0 0.10 divided by 12, you get 1016.74, okay? Which is the same as saying 1 plus 0. Point, sorry, well, 1,000 times 1 plus 0 0.10 divided by 12 squared. You get it? It's the same pattern as before? Okay. If you keep going down, if you keep going down 1, 2, you can do 3, 4, whatever, go all the way to 12, okay? At the end of 12, or at the beginning of your 12th month, you're going to have 1,095.58, 1,095.58 times 1 plus 0 0.10 divided by 12, which equals, uh, in this case, 1,104.71, which is the same as 1,000. It's the same pattern as before, right? 1,000 times 1 plus 0 0.10 divided by 12 to the 12th, okay? After three years, that would be 36 months, you can just apply this formula. Don't bother doing all this whole formula thing. 36 months is going to be 1,000 times 1 plus 0 .10, 0 0.10, 0 0.10 divided by 12, to the 12 times 3, which is the same as saying to the 36 which if you do it on your calculator, and you should, 1348.18. Okay, that's after three years. Okay. And by the way, if you remembered, I erased it now, but after three years on the other one, you only had 1331. So it's better if the bank pays you every month for the money that they're borrowing that they're they're borrowing from you, right? Instead of every year. Hmm. Have I gone too fast on that stuff? It's just basically apply the formula that we've got here for each month and figure out how much at the end of how many months times the number of years. Okay? And it, it's better for you. Okay? Here's the formula, and guess what? It's on your formula sheet. Okay? The end formula here, I'll write it right down in this little corner here. Okay? Deposit P dollars okay, at rate R subject to compound interest, compound interest n times per year. Okay, we got another a little another variable in here. N times per year. Okay. The amount a. Okay, after t years is, I don't have any room down there, but I'll write it up here, okay? And it's on your sheet. p dollars, you've got a rate r, compound interest, n times per year compounding. We compounded 12 times per year in this one. We compounded one time per year in the previous example, okay? That equals, right up here, okay? That equals the final value equals the principal times 1 plus the rate divided by the number of times per year that you compound it, all raised to the number of years times the, or the number of times per year times the number of years. Whew. Luckily, that's also on your formula sheet. What's that, Mark? <laughs> yep, still on compound interest. We're getting there. We're getting there, don't worry. Okay, so this is one where you just have to, you have to know a couple things. This, this value n 
it's going to give you, sometimes it's going to tell you the value n in different ways. Okay? So it might say, you're compounding annually. Okay? If you're compounding annually, that's the word. How many times per year are you doing it? Once a year. Annually is once a year, right at the end of the year. Okay? Semi annually? Yup, you're doing it at six months, so you're doing it twice during the year. Quarterly? You're doing it four times a year. Monthly? 12 times a year. And daily? 365 times a year, or if it's the homework, it might be 360 times a year. I don't know why they do that. Yeah, if it was leap year, it would be 365.25, right? If there were leap years in there. Because there's a quarter day every year. Every four years, you do one year, one day. Yeah. Okay. All right. Ready for an example? All right. Fire up your calculators. <coughs> Find the future value. Find the future value. Okay. Of twenty-five hundred dollars invested at three percent interest, compounded quarterly, quarterly for five years. It's a long one because there's so much information I have to give you. Quarterly for nine years or five years. Okay. You actually have all the information, you just plug it in, but now you gotta make sure you calculate do it right on your calculator. A equals principal twenty five hundred dollars times one plus the rate point zero three divided by no, 0 0.03 divided by 4 because it's quarterly time raised to the 4 times 5 years. Okay. You got to do this one right on your calculator. Okay? What'd you get? Nope. 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 Oh, okay. Here's, here's how you do it on your calculator. You ready? If you guys want to type in your calculator. I would do, well, I would rewrite it a couple times, actually. Okay? Why wouldn't it be what? Yeah, it's, no, no, it's, it's uh, quarterly, which means there's four times a year, not months. Quarterly means four times a year, every three months, actually. But you're doing it four times a year. Right? That's not saying every four months. All right. Here's what I would do. I would, do, I would rewrite this. 2,500 times 1 plus. I would do this first. What's 0 0.03 divided by 4? Let me do that in the calculator. If you put it all in, that's great. But I would do it this way. 0 0.03 divided by 4. 0 0.0075. 0 0.0075. And then I'd raise that to the 20th power. But I wouldn't do any of that yet, because you can't quite do it yet. 2,500 times 1.0075 raised to the 20th. Now, you can type all this in at once. But here's the part that you gotta, you got to do. I would do first if you're not doing it all at once. 1.0075, 1 1.0075, and then either the caret button and then 20, or the x to the y button and then 20. Okay. What is that equal to? One zero zero seven five to the 20th. Something like that? Close enough. Uh, 142. 2,500 times that number gives you, hopefully, $2,902.96. If you're good and you can type it all at once, great. 
2,500, put the parentheses, put 1 plus that divided by that, put the end parentheses, caret 20, and you're good to go. If you do the caret and then do 4 times 5, it will be wrong. You've got to have a parentheses before the 4 and the 5. Yeah. Okay. Ace, make sure you know how to do this on your calculator. You're going to have to do it. Okay. Okay. Try this one. I'll leave this up here for now. Try this one. $7,000. $7,000. Invested at 4% daily for three years. And make 365 days per year. For three years. Three years. N is the number of times per year. Okay. So if you're annual, and Chad, if you're doing these in your head, you're a much better person than me. Or Damien, rather. You're doing these in your head? You're a much better person than me. So if you said annually, you just put one on there? Yep, annual would be one. 78.92.43. And if you left off 0.43, I'm cool with that. Make sure you can type these into your calculator. Yeah, four. Three, three. 365 times three in parentheses, yes. Anybody having trouble with the calculator on this one? Seven thousand eight hundred and sixty. Did you round at any point? Yeah. Can I see what you typed? Seven thousand times one plus point zero four divided by uh, to the one zero five eight. Three sixty five times three is not one zero five eight. Three sixty five times three. One zero nine five, is that what it is? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know you didn't have one. Yeah. How's it going, Jeremy? Good. Okay. Did everybody get this one? Almost. So there are a couple people working on the numbers. Practice these. You'll get plenty, plenty of practice on the homework. Practice them. Okay. I think, oh, oh man, you know what? We're supposed to have a test next week. Holy smokes. Hmm. Yeah, I guess we have a test. I'll talk, we'll talk about it tomorrow. This, is a lot of, this weekend's a lot of stuff to learn. <coughs> we don't need a test. Yes, you do. <laughs> Tests are overrated. How else am I going to make you learn it? 
OK. Everybody got the calculators working on this one? No. No, you still don't? You want to do it all at once? No, I'm just trying to figure out the 365 times 3 on the calculator. Do I do carrot? Times 3? Yeah, you do. You do carrot parentheses. Right. 365 times 3. Uh, end parentheses. Uh, so you can't do 365. Uh, right, no. Uh -uh. No, you got to do the times button. So 7,000 hit the times mark, open parentheses, 0 0.04 divided by 365 plus 1, close parentheses, and then the carrot, open parentheses, 365 times 3. Yes, 7,000, open parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.04 divided by 365, end parentheses. 7, times oh, you're right, you do need the times in there for your. Okay, let me start over. 7,000 times, open parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.04 divided by 365, end parentheses, caret, open parentheses, 365 times 3, end parentheses, enter. <coughs> OK. Now, now I'm going to blow your mind with something. You ready? If you have $1,000 at 4% interest for five years, <laughs> compounded. Now, compounded. Now, we've talked about how to compound these things, right? If you're doing it for zero years, right? zero times a year at 4%, you would get $1,200. Make sense? Yeah, for five years. Okay. If you, got, if you didn't compound it at all, that should be the, what you'd get after five years. If you compound it annually, you would get $1,216.65. If you compound it monthly, you would actually get more. Well, because the bank's paying you more often for the money that it's borrowing. It's compounding it more often. 1221.00. What if you did it daily? Well, if you did it daily and you did this formula, you'd get 1221.39. Can we do better than daily? Hourly. How about hourly? If you do hourly, okay, I run out of board, <laughs> right? If you do hourly, you get 1221.40. Not doing too much better, one cent more, right? But could you do better than that? Minutes. You could do minutely. <laughs> every minute. I don't even know if that's a word. But, but you could do it every minute. Well, you can keep going down. You could do secondly. You could do tenth of a second. You could do a nanosecond, right? Well, what, what do you think you get if you do it at like the minimal amount of time you can think of? What's that? Would it keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger forever? And so if you ended up doing it every instant of time, would it keep getting bigger and bigger forever? As it turns out, it wouldn't. Now, this is something you don't actually learn until you take calculus class. But you can get this thing called continuous. Continuous, well, this part you learn in here. But the, part, the, the, the rationale behind it is not. Continuous compounding means that you never stop compounding. You do it every instant of time, down to the tiniest little instant. Okay? The value doesn't change much. Notice when you went from daily to hourly, you only got one more penny after a whole five years. Right? It doesn't change that much. But you end up with a really simple formula, as it turns out. You end up with this formula that looks like this. And I'm, I'm going to show you why it's easy in a second. 1 plus 1 over n raised to the n. Now, it turns out that this, as n gets as big as it is, in other words, you keep doing it annually, monthly, daily, more and more and more times per year, or per, per year, n gets really, 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 really big, right? As that happens, this number turns into e. You remember that from last week? 
We talked about the exponential function. Yeah, you guys who weren't here don't, because you didn't watch the video yet. But there's this exponential function called e, which mean well, it's, it's yeah, it gets called the exponential. It's called the natural, natural number, natural number. I think so. 2.718281818 dot 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 does not repeat. It's another irrational number, but it's called this number e. We talked about this. We did do it briefly on the on the last week's thing. And what you end up getting for compound interest is a really simple formula. And you get not this one anymore for p dollars. P dollars at rate r, at rate r, continuous compounding. Okay, continuous compounding. I'm going to take this out now. Continuous compounding for t years, you get a final rate of, or a final amount of A equals the principal times this constant E raised to uh, the rate times the time. That's it. A nice, easy one. So if you get compound interest continuously, which banks never do, by the way. They never do that. I don't know why. They just don't want to pay. They're kind of cheap. Okay, But we can do this really easily using this formula. And there's a button on your calculator called E. $500 invested ten for 10 years, $500 for 10 years, 3% continuously compounded. Find the value. It's easy. Plug it right in here. A equals 500 times E raised to the power rate 0.03 or 0 0.03 times 10. Here's how you do it on your calculator. 500 times, there's a button on there, it's E. It might be the second, and then E. E-X. Might be, it's not E-X. Let me look on some of these calculators. Let's see. Yes, it is E raised to the X, yes. So it might say, your calculator might say E raised to the X, or it might just say E. Or might say something else. But that's the button you're going to need to push. So you do 500 times, then that E raised to the X button, and then open parentheses again, 0 0.03 times 10, close parentheses, and you should get 674.93 if you're round to the nearest cent. What'd your calculator do? I bet your calculator, I think your calculator, you might have to do the number first and then do e to the x. You might have to. What's that? They use those formulas in Wall Street. They use, yeah, Wall Street, uh, Wall Street not so much, but they do use them in uh, real life. Yeah, we do use them in real life. 500 times e raised to the 0 0.03 times 10. Your calculator, you may have to do the you may have to do this part first. Did it give you an error? Yeah. yeah. Let, me, let me give you guys another one while I'll go over and, and help out with the calculator. Try this one. $1,000 invested, seven years, 2.5% interest, compounding continuously. Try that one. What would you get on this one? Let's see. 500 times second, where's the e to the x is? Oh, there we go, okay. So let's try this. 500 times, uh, what was the? 0 0.03, let's do this in parentheses. Parentheses, 0 0.03 times 10, then parentheses. Then you do the e to the x button. Then you do equals. 674.93. This is a tough calculator to do this on sometimes. Let me write it down for you here. You're going to do it like this. And this one, you might want to write this down so you know. You're going to do 500 times 
parentheses, 0 0.03 times 10. Okay. Then you're going to do e to the x. Then you're going to hit, what's the button on yours? Equals. Then you're going to hit equals again. Yeah. Make sure. 500 times 0 0.03 times 10. Oh, yeah. 500 times 0 0.03. Oops, I forgot to do the, keep forgetting to do the parentheses. 500 times parentheses. Oh, you only need to do equals once, actually. Yep. Um, this one might be one you want to do part by part. Might be better to do that in part by part in your calculator. Or we can try to figure out another calculator to use. Questions on this one? What did you guys get for this one? 1,284. Not what I got. 1191.25. One, 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 That's what you get plugging into here. 1,000 times e raised to the 0 0.025 times 7. <coughs> Try it again in the calculator and see if you get it. Ah, not 10 years. Okay. All right. Remember how, remember how we could do this with simple interest? Ask how much you need to invest now to get a certain amount in the future. There's a formula for it. It's, I think it's on your sheet, too. The, percent, the present value for compound interest. Yep, present value for compound interest. It's the one on the right, two down. Second one down on the right. Now we just get into basically plugging into a formula that you can read off your sheet, right? We've now got p equals the final value divided by, now this is where it gets crazy again. Now you've got not only a bracket, but also a parenthesis. 1 plus the rate divided by the number of times per year your compound raised to the number of years compounded times the number of years the number of times compounded per year times the number of years, end bracket there, and that's it. Whew. Again, calculators. This is where it comes into calculators. Let's say in 10 years we want $20,000. That would be nice. 10 years we want $20,000. How much do we invest now? How much now? If you get 6% interest, 6% interest compounded daily. Just write it on your write it in your notes. This is a good one to just just so you can practice this. Principle that you put down equals the amount that you want at the end. 20,000 divided by bracket parenthesis 1 plus the rate is 0 0.06 divided by the number of times per year 365 end parentheses raised to 365 times 10 years end bracket if you do this correctly first on your first shot, you're a good person. Okay? You're really good at the calculator. What'd you get? <coughs> nice. 10,976.77. Okay. Oliver, you might, this might be another one where you're going to have to figure out how to do it in your calculator.
Yeah, yeah, look at that. You put $11,000 in, after 10 years you get $20,000. It's not bad. Now, if you can get someone and they'll give you 6% every year, you're lucky, but especially compounding it daily. Banks normally compound monthly, maybe, quarterly, something depends. Okay, let's get going again. Let's talk a little bit about this effective annual yield. Okay, this effective annual yield. Last, last sheet on this little section here. Okay, let's, well, let's do a, a, real, a, a bit of a more involved example on this. Okay, let's say that you deposit $4,000, $4,000, okay, at what's called an 8% nominal rate. In other words, that's the rate that we're going to use for the compounding interest. Nominal rate, compounded compounded monthly, compounded monthly, okay? First, we're going to find the value after one year, okay? Find the value after one year, okay? Well, we have a formula that does that, okay? To compound annually, or sorry, yeah, compounded monthly. Okay, you look at your compound interest and you get the future value is A equals principal times 1 plus the rate divided by the number of times you compound per year times the rate times the time. In this case, okay, that's going to be, uh, let's see, $4,000, $4,000 times 1 plus. 0 0.08 for the rate over 12, thank you, because it's monthly. Okay. And then that's going to be raised to 12 times 1 because it's just one year. If you do that on your calculator, we're going to end up with, and I'll let you do that on your calculator too, 4332.00 dollars. If you look on your, well, I'll wait till you calculate that out. Do that on your calculator. Make sure you get that correct. To find the effective yield, okay. we can do the following, okay? If you look on your formula sheet, you'll find an effective yield formula, which says the effective yield equals 1 plus the rate divided by the number of times per year it's compounded, raised to the just the number of times compounded, minus 1. It's a nice, relatively easy formula, all things considered. Okay. So in this case, we're going to get 1 plus the rate, okay, which is the rate we got before, 0 0.08 divided by 12, because that's the number of times per year, raised to the 12th minus 1. What do you actually get for that? Do it on Sterling's calculator. What's the y? Sorry? What's the y? Yield. The y is the yield. The annual, if or the, sorry, the uh, effective yield, the annual effective yield. 0, 0.8 divided by 12, raised to the 12th. This one equals, how about 0 0.083 or 8.3% effective yield? What's that? So you're just raising the interest. 
You're just raising it to the number of times per year. It's the interest rate that you started, the interest rate that you're getting for compounding, but you just plug it in. It's much easier than doing that whole like subtraction thing and, and so forth. You just, just plug it in like this. So when you start to yield, you're going to give a percentage of the interest, how the interest changes? Yeah, yeah it, this is the simple interest that you would have to get in order to make it equal to the compound interest that you did get. That's what this is telling you. So it's saying because you're doing this cool thing called compounding, you, get, you only have to get 8%. And it's as if you were getting 8.3% doing simple interest. So it's nice. Nice that way. Okay. So I have a question for you. Do the, they're, you're going to try two different things. Which investment has a higher yield? This is the important part when you're like, especially when you're getting like car loans and stuff. You, you go, or house loans. You can do all these, well, you should probably do it on a computer for house loans. It's kind of crazy. But car loans and things, what's a better deal? 3.25% compounded monthly, monthly, or 3.4% compounded annually. Use this, what's that? That's going to be using this formula. You're going to use it twice. You're going to say, first, the yield in the first case, we'll call it the yield 3.25 equals 1 plus the rate 3.25, well, sorry, 0 0.0325 divided by monthly payments, which is 12, raised to the 12 minus 1. That's going to be the first thing you're going to do. Okay. 1 plus 0 0.0325 divided by 12 raised to the 12th power minus 1. 3.30%. So you'll get 0 0.0330. Zero, zero, yeah, 0 0.0330. Then you do the same thing for 3.4% with the annual compounding. 1 plus, right, 0 0.034 divided by 1 raised to the 1 you get, well, sorry, minus 1. Okay. You end up getting 3.4%. Why'd you get 3.4%? Because that is a simple interest, right? Compounded annually, once a year, you're only doing it for one year. That's really the same as the simple interest, 3.4%. So what's better? Annually, compounded 3.4% or 3.4% versus the 3.25. So that's how you compare the two using this effective annual yield. <clears throat> All right. Any questions on annual yield, effective annual yield? Time for a new marker. It's getting a little bit hazy. Here's this. The next section we're going to talk about is on annuities, stocks, and bonds. Hmm, stocks and bonds, right? An annuity, this is on section 8.4. Whoa, whoa. That's a dark marker. Okay. Annuities, annuities, stocks, and bonds. I think there's a, you guys ever play Monopoly? Yes. I think there's a, a community chess card or something that says something like, annuity matures, collect $100 or something like that. I never knew what that meant until I learned this math stuff. <laughs> so an annuity is a sequence of payments. An annuity is a sequence of payments, 
sequence of payments. Okay. Equal payments, I should say. Equal payments. Sequence of equal payments made at equal time periods. In other words, let's say you put $100 a month away for three years. That's an equal amount of money every month, an equal time period, for a certain amount of time. <coughs> okay? The value, oops, value is, the value of the annuity is the sum, the sum of all deposits plus the interest. Now, what we're basically doing is we're saying, you put $100 in the bank. As that, until that next month, let's say you do it every month. Put $100 in the bank. Over that month, you're going to get some interest. Then you're going to add another 100 So let's say you, after one month, you get $101. Well, now after a month, you put another 100 in. Now you've got $201. And then you start getting interest on the 201 And then let's say you have $203 after two months. Then you put another 100 Then you get 303 And it adds that way. Okay? It's a very good way to invest money, by the way, because you keep adding more. And the, hopefully, the, the, whatever you've, if you're doing stocks or something, the, hopefully the value is going up of, the, of the each individual stock. <coughs> Guess what? There's a formula on your sheet. It's the one that's called future value of an annuity. And this is like a gigantic, ginormous equation. <laughs> right? If. P is deposited. In other words, number, the principal is deposited at the end of each compounding period. In other words, every month, let's say, you, you add a certain amount. That's the principal each month. Deposit P after each compounding period. For each compounding period with interest rate R, interest rate R in decimal form, compounded, oof, compounded, my handwriting's getting worse, compounded n times a year, like we've been doing, times per year. Okay. Then the value of the annuity is A equals, let's see, I want to make sure I get this one right on your sheet here. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah. The principal times, in brackets, 1 plus the rate divided by the number of times you're compounding per period times the number of times times the years minus 1 divided by the rate divided by the number of years. Oof. That is kind of a long one. You could do this a little differently. I don't know why they do this bottom. I don't know why they don't flip this over and make it n times p divided by r, but they, they don't. You could switch this and just make that n, and that would just be r if you wanted to. But read it off your sheet, r divided by n. Times the whole thing, yeah. Yep. Okay. And they actually put that in parentheses too. All right, we better try an example on this. $300 at the end of each month. So you get your monthly paycheck, even though in the Navy and the military we get twice a month, but let's say you get a monthly paycheck. $300 at the end of each month. End of each month. At 2% interest, 2% annual interest, interest compounded, compounded monthly for 20 years. 
So you're going to spend the next 20 years of your life putting 300 bucks a month away. Okay. How do we do this? We plug it into the formula. A equals principal each month, 300 times 1 plus the rate, 0 0.02. Not such a great rate, by the way. 0 0.02 divided by, it is monthly, so divided by 12. That, forgot to put the parentheses there, times 12 <coughs> times 20 years minus 1, end bracket, the whole thing divided by 0 0.02 divided by 12. Or 12 times this whole thing divided by 0 0.02. That's, that's going to be, uh, yeah. We'll see what that, we'll see what that un ends up being. Let me know when you got an answer for that. 72. No, it's not 72. That would be a bad investment. Sorry. I know it's hard to read that one. Point zero two. Two percent interest. Twelve times twenty up here. That's in, that should be in parentheses too, by the way. Because it's. Did you get it yet? Oh, your calculator. It's not what I got. Yeah, yeah, I like that one. Well, who said that? Eight, eight, four, three, nine point oh five dollars. Did you figure out where you did it wrong? The, the bottom one, yeah, this is in parentheses. I mean, it doesn't have to be. You, if you do this whole thing and then divide by, well, yeah, you'd have to divide by 0 0.02 and then divide by 12 again. No, multiply by 12. Yeah. So this, this example, uh-oh, what's wrong? Uh-oh. All right, let's, let's see if we can figure out how to type this into most of your calculators. 300 times parentheses, parentheses, open parentheses, open parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.02, here, I'll do it this way, 1 plus 0 0.02 divided by 12, end parentheses, <coughs> caret, open parentheses, 12 times 20, close parentheses, let's see, da -da -da -da, minus 1, close parentheses, divided by, open parentheses, 0 0.02 divided by 12, close parentheses. That should do it on most calculators. <laughs> Yours might be a little different. Uh-huh. Uh, OK. You distributed the 300 through? Did you get the right answer? OK, good. Now, here's the part that, here's the part that should be interesting. 
here's, here's, guys, here's the part that should be interesting. Calculate how much money you put in. Over that 20 years, how much money did you put in? $300 times 12 times 20. How much money did you put in? 72000 You put in $72,000. You got out $88,439. That's not so bad. 20 years. Subtract these two. 88,000, 88,439.05 divided by 72,000. 16,439 dollars? And five cents. And five cents. Basically, that's how much money you got for doing nothing, for waiting to use it. The bank paid you 16,439 dollars for the use of your 70, for the use of your 72,000 dollars. Not so bad. But that's putting that's putting 300 bucks a month away. Anybody planning on working 30 years, 40 years? I mean, if you keep putting, if you if you plug in instead of 20 here, 30 or 40, you'll see you'll get a ton more money. Well, that's a pretty good deal. Good deal. Okay. All right, let's do the, let's see, there's one, well, there's two more formulas, but the one other formula, let's say you want to figure out how much money you have to put away to get to a certain amount. That's the other formula we got on there. Okay? If you want to figure out how much money you have to put away to get to a certain amount. Yeah, question. How do you know when you know which formula is going to ask you? How do you know which, oh, good question. Good question. Uh, Otter says, hey, how do I know which formula I got to use? Well, first of all, it's going to say something like simple interest in it. Okay? And if it says simple interest, you got to use one of the first two ones. Right? If it says, um, com if it says uh, future value for compound interest, right? and you know that you're not doing continuously compounding, you got to use one in the second, the second line there. It might say continuous compounding, and then you know to use the one with the E in it. It might say, if it says the annual yield, you know to use that one. So you just context, right? You'll figure it out, but it's just, it's going to be, it's going to take a little practice. But then, does it tell me afterwards to find like the simple interest or the compound interest? It'll tell you which one to do, yeah. It might tell you, it might ask you to do both. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Sure, but then you've got to use the other one. you just got to use two formulas. But there won't be, they won't, you don't have to mix them in the same part of the problem. You might have to do it twice, but that's it. Okay, you ready? How much must you invest at the end of each month? How much must, must you invest at the end of each month? Okay. At the end of each month. End of each month. How much, I should say how much. How much at the end of each month, do you invest in annuity earning? This is where you know how to which formulas to use. The right yeah, annuity earning. It's the right hand side one. Okay. Four. Three percent annual interest. Three percent interest. Compounded. Compounded monthly monthly so you have $150,000 at the end of $50,000 in 10 years. Okay. Well, you use the other formula on there. The final value equals the principal per month times bracket one plus the rate divided by the number of these a lot of these formulas do look the same times the number of payments per year times time minus one end bracket divided by rate over 
the number per year. And these should be, again, in parentheses. Looks. Oh, is this one we already did? Oh, yeah. I forgot I didn't. Well, we could do the algebra to get it back. But this is the, the other one is, I'll write it down. Yeah, that did look familiar. This one is what? P equals, let me get the right formula sheet. Should make you do the algebra. Annual rate times R divided by uh, the final value times R divided by N bracket one plus parenthesis one plus R divided by N raised to the NT minus one N bracket. There we go. All right, plug into that formula and see what you get. Anybody think they got it yet? What is it? No. There you go. How much? 1073 point. Did you round anywhere in there? Yeah, if you round it in there, you'll get a slightly different value. <coughs> These are the ones where it makes a difference if you round. 1,073 bucks a month. That's a lot of money per month. But if you could put away 1,000 bucks and 1,073 dollars a month at 3% interest, that's not bad. That's like a pretty low rate. You can give 150 grand in 10 years. Not too bad. And you put away 10 times 12 times 1,000, yeah, put away 120, 125,000. It's not bad. Get 25 grand. And again, that's at a pretty low rate altogether. For a CD? For a CD, I don't know. Well, a 10 year CD, I don't know if you get 3%. I don't think you would. 7 year CD would need to get about 3%. Do you? 7 year? 217, 8. Oh, okay. You still got the tax up Oh, uh, yeah, tax. That's right. Did you get it right? Nice. OK. Homework, you're going you're gonna to want to throw your computers on the ground if you're not doing the math and you're not doing the calculators right. You do this, OK?